for this facade, I wanted to kind of put my own spin on this. So I'm adding lighting. So I've got this kind of grain of sand size LED. And I'm just gonna insert through a hole in the lampshade and then I'm gonna wind it around everything and then put it into this hole into there. And then on the back of the facade is where I'm going to have my power supply and switch. Now a bit of a warning, a lot of the techniques that I'm gonna be using in this video are very much experimental, just kind of, hmm, let's see what happens if I do this kind of mentality. And so I'm starting out with the Zenithal highlight kind of mentality. I got uh, black in the background, and then I'm shooting from above a white primer. And so that's giving it more of a shadow effect. Uh, whether or not it actually shows up in the end is a whole other story. But uh, I think it could have, if I didn't do so much more experimentation on top of this one, uh, then it probably would have shown through. But this is definitely a technique that you could employ, just you have to be lighter on the top layers. And I also note that I'm just doing a little bit of highlights on certain bricks, just to make sure that there's no uniformity. If you look at bricks in the world, real world, they're gonna have some variation to it. Even if it's on the same pile, you're gonna have some that are a little darker than the others, and this can work out the effect. You can also play a little bit with some potential lighting and shadowing with uh, how you're highlighting your bricks as well. Now looking at my references, the paint that's kind of at the bottom of the lampshade where it's kind of reflecting the light is more of a buff and I kind of want to stick with that. I was thinking about doing silver, but I think the buff is going to really, really show the uh, chipping effects. So now we're just going to add a light gray to all the different uh, kind of cement, rock, whatever this is actually made out of. I have no clue. That's more maybe for someone that's in construction or geology for all I know. So I'm just going and I'm just kind of lightly and putting in some squiggles all to the rock. This is going to be our first layer basically for all everything else that's going to come up. So now I'm going to add some Insignia white to that same color and uh, just go in and kind of create some highlights and cracks. So whenever you have that crack, it's usually been less exposed to the sunlight and everything and all the effects, so you tend to have a little bit of a lighter shade that's going to be showing in there. So now we've got a little bit more experimenting going on. So I've used this type of fabric that's used for kind of different seams and whatnot uh, in the fabric world. But if you're looking at a hobby store, it's kind of a marbling mask. I've got a different video that I'll link with this to show you a little bit more about it. But what this will do is do what it says. It's gonna be kind of creating an, a, mar a marbling effect. So we don't wanna actually have real marble because highly doubt that this town is building their buildings with marble uh, that's likely pretty expensive so we don't want to overdo it but we do want to have some tonal variety to it 
and this is going to work very well. So you'll see me using this throughout the video. properly you got to look at it in a series of lots and lots of layers just different colors just changing that tonal variety to it so in the end we might have seven different colors that we're actually able to distinguish through these different you know marks throughout there and so this I'm going to be using the dark ghost gray and this works really well because the Timia kind of has a little bit of a blue to it so it looks really, really good for something where we're looking at more of a concrete. Now to try some sky gray. This uh, added a little bit of change, but not a crazy amount of change to the variety on it. So I just kind of do some blending in here, maybe a few little splotches. But uh, from here, we're probably going to have to go into something a bit more extreme. So that's where we get into a German gray here. Now we're gonna add that in and that's gonna make a big contrast that you can kind of see. And so we'll just put that into all the different spots to very much try to replicate this being, you know, actual stone. Now to go in the complete opposite direction, we're using Insignia White. So we can get a little bit more of that contrast between the darkest colors and the lightest colors. And at this point, probably none of that pre-shading that I did is having any effect because of all the different layers that I put on where I'm experimenting. But it's starting to get exactly where I want it to be, looking like actual stone or concrete. Now at this point, I've pretty much erased all of the effects with the cracks. So I'm going back through and re-highlighting all of the cracks. Now, whenever you're starting to see some big stark differences between certain layers and like the cracks and all there, one thing to keep in mind is you're also going to have a wash that's going to go over this. And that tends to blend things in. So don't worry if it looks just a little bit too extreme at this point. The wash is going to kind of blend it all together. Again, I come back to the Tamiya Sky Gray to kind of blend in those extremes that I had earlier. And I'm using that mask, which I just remembered. It's seam tape. If you're going to just get it from the Joanne Fabric or wherever, then so you could do that, but it's probably a dollar more to buy it from an actual hobby store where it's marbling mask. But if you want to save a buck or two and actually get something that maybe even your wife has, seam tape is what I found it on Google as, but your wife probably knows more about it than I do, so just ask her. So now I wanted some dark, dark shades, so grab that German gray again, try to use that mask, just add a little bit in there to just darken it up and make it a little bit dirtier, or the variety in the cement, whatever Actually, it makes that in the real world, but it's starting to look a little, quite a bit more like actual cement now. So now to play with the lower bricks there, we definitely don't want them to blend in with uh, the kind of cement above. So we're gonna just use a hard edge here to make sure that we're only painting that. And we're gonna try to make it more distinguished from the other bricks. But also keep in mind the bricks that are just right above it, we're gonna be painting black anyway. So if they look the same, that's not a problem. We're gonna be changing that later. Okay. 
So now we're going to paint this whatever hole that's there with, I guess, the structure around it. If anybody knows what that's actually there for, I didn't really spend a whole lot of mental energy trying to figure that out. Just to kind of replicate a little bit more of the box art and the instructions in there is good enough for me. So I've got Light Ghost Gray, and I'm painting that, putting it in just a couple of different layers, and just kind of doing the same thing that I have with all of the cement. But as you can see, it doesn't look too different. So I'm kind of going in and going and adding some little stippling effects to it and all that. But in the end, I'm going to actually just abandon that and go to racing white here. And then after the racing white, now we're going to get into some chipping. So while that's drying, we're going to use some light ghost gray onto the bricks below and try to make those a little bit more distinguished. Now to have some fun with the light. So I'm just looping in the LED and you can get into a couple of different sizes, but just don't use one of the gigantic bulbs so it looks like it's a floodlight. This is kind of almost grain of rice size. I have to see exactly on the packaging what it is, but something similar to that. You can also make it a little, a little bit more like a bulb by adding some like UV glue over it. That won't short it out or anything. And then once we have that wrapped around the pole, we'll be able to put that in place. Now for the bricks, we want to add some tonal variety to that. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing a ton of masking, I'm just using a brush and painting individual bricks. So some of them I'm going to have the pre-shade be very white, some very black, some kind of gray, some just the regular shading that we have uh, here that's going to be kind of in between and that's going to give us a big variety. that I'm trying to replicate the brick with this. If you wanted to use the brick red that uh, I believe this comes with or the different shading that they want you to use with the AK third gen, that would be a good way to go. I just didn't want to mix things up with my airbrush and just keep it all lacquers for what I'm putting through the airbrush. Now, as you can see, it's, it's a bit too red. So now put in a little bit more of an orange to give it more of a actual brick look. I looked at a brick online in pictures, which is always great. Look at your references. Now it's actually starting to look like brickwork. So now to work on the bricks around the door. Now the scheme of this might look a little bit familiar. I wanted to have a little bit of a nod to something uh, kind of important in my life, you could say. So Ghostbusters was always big when I was growing up. So this is, in a way, looking kind of like the entry to the firehouse for Ghostbusters. So I'm kind of re replicating that. So we'll have the doors be red. And yeah, so a little bit of a nod to there. Obviously, different century or different time piece or diff different point in the world. But that's what I'm trying to go for, just to be a little bit unique. So I'm first starting out with black. But then I'm highlighting a few bricks with German gray and just to add that variety. And then we're gonna have more and more layers on top of this. 
Now for some sponge chipping. So I'm just using the primer gray that kind of came with the kit and using that, just dabbing it in certain places so it kind of just picks up the high areas or just adds little blobs, something to replicate where this was painted, but you know, it's worn over time. And so that's kind of working with that. Also, you can use your sponge once it kind of gets dry, you can kind of swipe it along and it becomes almost like a dry brush and that can work out real well on these. and sponge chipping did a good job with kind of some small cracks and different blobs and whatnot but I want to make sure that I'm touching up the edges so I'm just using that same paint but with a really fine brush going through all the different edges and maybe some of the cracks because that's where you know you would have the most abrasion and whatnot wearing it so I'm gonna make sure that that gets shown the world, but keep the sky on your mind. For those of you that are paying close attention, I did this a little bit differently than you kind of are supposed to. So I was going through and doing a little bit of a different technique where I was still using some of the hairspray chipping, but doing it in more of a different way where I'd have the uh, red and then do the tan and then try to do the chipping on top of that and so you're wearing through the wood layer to get to the red and it didn't work real well so what i did i started all over again and now i'm working on just going to the wood layer so we're making this look like the wood then we're gonna put the hairspray then we're gonna put the red and wear it as it actually would So 
once again, we're thinking in layers. So I've got a different color on this. I believe this is the buff. And what we're using that for is just give it a little bit more of a tonal variety than the sand that's there below. So this is gonna create a little bit more of a warmer tone that's going over it. And then we're gonna grab some darker tones and use that and just think in many, many layers. So now I've added some German gray to the mix and you can see it's definitely darker. This is probably the most satisfying portion of the wood painting. If you look at a lot of wood that's kind of gotten rotten and everything, you know, it gets into that real brownish, I mean dark, dark gray kind of uh, look to it where it's rotten. And so we're going to replicate that, and especially painting the top parts, certain points where there would be more rot. At this point off stage, I added a clear protective layer and then I added some of my hairspray. Some people will just put it straight from the can. I like to kind of decant it into the airbrush and then spray it on and then go right to your next layer. So this is just still the Tamiya LP lineup and I just kind of made a red that is distinct from the brick because we don't want it to just kind of blend in with the brick. So I've got a, just a darker red and just laying it down in all the different places. And then we're gonna still, once again, think in layers and add some variety to it. for the fun part so I'm just wetting the entire surface and so it gets through the paint and has the hairspray just kind of release the paint layer above it and I'm gonna use a really cheap brush that's just really stiff bristles to be able to just scrape at it you can also get into some toothpicks and some other things but with this since it's already pretty well molded and everything and I want to hit the high spots all I gotta do is just this cheap super stiff bristle brush and just run it over everything and then you'll just see some of the layers starting to come off right now it looks really weird since i'm just forcefully sho shoving everything around you get all these bubble effects but once you uh, just pat it down with a paper towel it's gonna look awesome How much chipping do you do? Well, kind of depends on what you're trying to replicate. If it's ridiculously worn 1800s or something, then a lot, obviously. Now, if you ever do go through and you have done too much, well, you can just add in layers again. Put on some hairspray, put on the red, and then just dial it back on the next round. <laughs> I wanted a little bit more in certain areas so go at it you can use different brushes that are gonna be more or less aggressive it's just some pointy things if you want a specific chip or scrape at some point and then once you're at where you want to be you just stop it's just that simple now to add a little bit of chipping to this whole structure thing above so i'm just grabbing into some kind of dark dark gray and just using the sponge chipping method to kind of replicate some different tonal variety in there 
and it's, it's starting to get where we need to but there's definitely a few more things that we need to do especially put that sponge in there uh, that I need to touch up with something else later on now for a little bit more chipping going on with the brush Point. just doing some blending in with the sky gray and so some of the things don't look quite so stark of that I sprayed just once again your hairspray and then got into insignia white now I'm just letting it soak in the water the top coat on this one must have been a little bit thinner or something because I'm getting some pretty big chips maybe it's also just what uh, the surface is you know it's smooth compared to all these different ridges that you had with the wood you can see some big cracks but it fits what we're trying to achieve so I'm definitely digging it So next up I'm using German Black Brown to be able to go and touch up all the little details in there. So now to do a little bit of rust using the sponge chipping method and I'm just using a few Vallejo colors they've got kind of a rusty orange a wood color so this you can mix your own but I have the whole like rust set that they have with all the special colors also uh, yes I had a bloody nose as you can see but uh, you know the show must go on I can't stop for anything apparently so wish I could edit that out but I can't uh, so I apologize for that.
So now that we have the actual piece of metal it's starting to be rusty, we need to add the streaks from where that rust oxide is, is falling down. You know, every, with every rainstorm, some of that's going to leach out. So we're using some of those same Vallejo acrylics, but also oils work really well for this. And I'm just hitting certain surfaces, adding a little, bit, a little more of a drag to it. So if you look at some of your references, this is what we should be trying to achieve, where obviously it's more concentrated and dark in the middle, and then it kind of fades out as it goes to the outside of that streak. So to do that, starting very thin on the outsides and then working more dark and concentrated towards the inside. So right here, it's pretty much just a wash that I'm applying. the lampshade a little bit of love so we're just using sponge chipping on there with some orange and just doing that all around the edge bit of chipping color which you can make kind of your own with a little bit of well very dark brown and the good thing as you can see I kind of messed up and did a little bit too much of a blob if you just take a sponge dab it on top of that it'll start to turn into its own sponge chip and kind of fix the issue
for the signs, I'm using a generous amount of PVA glue on those boards. And the long one, I'm just using straight from the kit. And just attaching that, kind of pushing it into all the crevices as it dries. Once again, I like to put my own spin on things. So I grabbed the French sign collection from RP Diorama. And it's the same kind of thing, just printed onto cardstock. So using the glue and just kind of positioning in place, cleaning up the excess, and just working it in as it dries to make sure it's not like really far from the surface as it wouldn't be in real life. Q-tip or as this British would say a cotton bud and just rolling that into the surface pushing into those little rivet details is going to help kind of make it look like it's actually attached to the surface instead of just floating on it. <laughs> so now with that metal plate start out with some dark German brown and then I'm just using the sponge chipping technique with uh, varying shades of the rust colors and creating the effect and stopping of course when it looks as it should but right now a little bit light so adding into some darker colors that'll make it a little bit more stark <laughs> for the point you've been waiting for oils so there's a couple ways that you can do the oil wash we got some mineral spirits and then I've got just some different types of oil the main one that I'm using on this is the starship filth and what you can do is kind of rub it in either make your own wash or you can see how I just dab some oil on there and then once I have it on the surface then I'm just moving around with some mineral spirits about oils is if you think that there's too much on there you can just remove it it's kind of on the fence with what level I wanted to have on this maybe in the end it might have been a bit too grungy but at the same time probably pretty accurate to real life once you put in that wash into the wood oh, it makes it just really pop you get into some recesses where it really looks grungy and kind of rotten wood so that helps a bunch <laughs> the wash to kind of the metal signs that are actually made out of paper can be a little bit difficult because you got to remember made out of paper so it's going to absorb a lot of that and so I'm 
kind of applied a bit too much so we'll start to try to remove that there and with the wood just grabbing some different q-tips or sponges and just try to get some of that excess off uh, what might work next time if i'm doing this is to use like the mig plasticator that's supposed to make the wood i mean the the paper a little bit easier to work with when it comes to all these oils and paints going over it just glue it to a cheap picture frame I got from Hobby Lobby and then with that I went through the wires and I attached a resistor and then just a basic battery pack you can use 3 volt 6 volt in this one and it has its own on off switch so that worked out really well thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed it especially to the end I know that one was a little bit longer but uh, there's a lot of techniques in there and with this you can get out of your comfort zone just in a weekend build building something a little bit unique and boy oh boy was it fun i'm going to be doing some more